Good morning po sa inyo lahat. Happy birthday to me daw, sabi ng mga tao. <laughs> so, May ito po ngayon. Birthday ko talaga ngayon. So, lahat po nang nag-greet, lahat po nang nag-send sa akin ng messages, maraming maraming salamat. I enjoy it po. Reading all those, you know, yung greetings po ng mga tao, you know, it helps me a lot, no? At na nabilis po talaga ako. So, before I start, I'd like to welcome everyone sa ating pong quarantine training. Ito po yung number 14 edition po. Lahat po kayo ay will really welcome po. I'd like to welcome everyone. Okay, now, I'd like to read the passage in the scripture. Okay? Consider it future, my brothers. This is uh, James chapter 1, verses 2 to verse 8. Okay? James chapter 2, or chapter 1, verse, chap, chapter 1, verse 2, verse 8. Okay? I want you to get the idea uh, when Paul, okay, decided to, uh, I'm sorry, when James decided to write a letter, he started because he understand that people are going through crisis during that time. No? Uh, in every generation, there's always crisis that is taking place. Okay? So during their time, James sent a letter to the believers and encouraged them. In fact, he said this, consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know, verse 3, that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Okay? So, James is not telling us that trials, crisis, okay, Christians are exempted. That's not the truth. Okay? He was trying to tell us that Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you praise trials of many kinds. Meaning to say, Paul, uh, James is telling us that trials will come. Okay? For sure, trial will come. Okay? Now look, why did he say, consider it pure joy? Pare, trials, consider it pure joy. What does it mean? It means like, When there is a trial, you constantly see your what? Dark moment. The darkest part of your situation. Okay? Darkness is covering us. Uh, James is telling us, no. You can have pure joy because... God is teaching you to see the bright side, not just the, I said, the dark side. So, when you're in the middle of the coronavirus crisis, would you believe, okay, the reality is there is a dark side on it. Okay? Everyone must be staying home. Sometimes, uh, no work, no pay. <laughs> or, you might lose your job. That's dark side. How can I, Pastor how can I have pure joy in the middle of this dark side? Yeah. You could have joy if you don't look at the dark side of this problem. But you look on the bright side. Meaning to say, James is telling us, you must have a positive outlook. Okay? Okay? You must be positive. Then, you can consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Okay? So trials has two sides. Trials gives you dark side and trials also gives you positive or bright side. So that is our direction today. I pray that every pastors and leaders Learn to see and identify the dark side of our situation today. But also, we never, we are not blind about the bright side. So I'm for bright side, not for dark side. Oh, of course, merong dark side, but there is also a bright side on this. Why? And now, this is the, the bright side. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. That's the bright side. Okay? Don't just be negative, negative, nega mentality. 
there is also a bright side because it produces what? Perseverance. And verse 4, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be what? Mature. That's another bright side. If you endure trials, if you are able to overcome because of a positive mind, okay? Because of your faith in God, you know what will happen? You will mature and you and complete, not lacking anything. So, this is the bright side now, my brother and sister. So, I know some of you for the last 40, 45 days, we've been through this situation. I really encourage you, no? Don't look at the dark, the dark side. There is a bright side, okay? Remember this. Morning starts at 12 o'clock in the morning. And it's dark. But we call it madaling araw or midnight. Okay? We call it midnight. In Tagalog, we call it madaling araw. It means nagmamadaling araw. The sunset is about to happen. So not because it's midnight, okay, and it is dark, the sun will never shine. No. I want you to fully see this picture. There's always bright in every darkness. There's, in fact, I should say, stars shines brightly in the night. Right? The stars shines brightly in the night. So, this attitude in the last 45 days, I pray that is uh, it's already built in in your character and in your spirit. I mean, for the last 14, this is the 14 quarantine, I've been giving you a lot of positive thoughts. Okay? Biblical understanding. I'm giving you for the last 14 sessions. You've been going through a lot. I'm trying to encourage you. I pray that the positive outlook, no, is already beginning to build in and getting stronger inside of you. Okay? So, why I want you to have a bright picture of you? Now, look, listen to this, no? <clears throat> I want you to understand that this crisis cannot be stopped. See that? You cannot stop it. Not one doctor was able to stop this coronavirus. Even our president, World Health Organizations, worldwide, with billions of people, not one person can say, I can stop the coronavirus. Still, they are studying it, they're doing a lot of experiment, because there are things that you cannot stop. This kind of crisis, sometimes and usually, you cannot stop it, okay? And the bad part is this, we cannot stop it, plus we cannot resist it. It's there, okay? So we're trying to put masks, we're trying to use the PPE among our frontliners, but this pandemic problem is irresistible. No one country was able to resist it. It penetrates, it comes to our home, into our life, and it has a devastating effect. That's the crisis. This is uncontrollable situation. That's why our government was trying to do everything. They receive a lot of complaint. They receive a lot of, because nobody is prepared for this. Because that's crisis. Nobody is prepared for that. Now, this virus is also you know, a situation with no respect to anybody. He is not a respecter of person. That's the problem. So whether you're rich, you're poor, uh, you are living here and there, it doesn't matter. He is no respecter of person. Okay? That's why, and, and the worst part is that he will come to you without your permission. So this is the nature. That's why most of us, because we cannot control the virus, you know, we try to do lockdown, we try to, but it still it penetrates. You see, the, the victims are increasing and the death toll are increasing. Well, I told you, he will not ask for your permissions. Now, having said that, it produced a lot of negative thoughts. It, it, it produced a lot of negative mentality. So that's my concern. There is a tendency that we don't see the bright part of this condition. We don't see that, we call it the opportunity. So most church today will be paralyzed and immobilized. Most pastors will be, you know, down and try to give up. 
Pero that's not the case, my brother and sister. We have to be positive. Everything will be affected. You know, because of this crisis, huh, many things will be affected. In fact, I should say that uh, many friendship okay, will be changed. Why? Because the people, those whom you believe, is no longer there to help you. So relationship and friendship will be affected. So that's why there are so many negative thoughts. No? Some people think, like, if you're in the church, they said, like, the pastor don't even visit me, the pastor don't even talk to me. So there's a lot of complaint because it affects everything. Okay? Look at your job. Is it affected? Yeah. When your job is affected, your economic life is affected. And when your economic life problem, it's going to be a money problem. And when you do look at your wife and your children, you are constantly demanded with enough money. But since you have out of job, no work, no pay, pressures is coming in. And then the birthing of negative thinking is upon you. Your wife has been so negative against you. We don't know what to do. We become negative to our government, to our barangay captain. Because negative forces is flooding in your mind, in your heart. Kaya po, because of that, marriage will change. Possible po yan. Your, your, your marriage life will be affected by this virus. That's why change will happen. Okay? And suddenly, but it has, again, I, I also have the, I call it the bright, bright pictures. Okay? There's always, if there's a dark side, there's also a bright side. I think some of you right now, after we go through this process of the pandemic problem for the last 45 days, now you begin to change your priority, right? It begins to change your priority. I, I, I love to hear those testimonies that people are telling us that now they begin to look for God. Now they begin to be desperate for God. Suddenly your priority was changed. Now you understand the meaning of seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's what I believe. So, listen. Some of you can also lost your priority. No? Because you probably you might be overwhelmed by the financial needs that you have. And then suddenly your priority God, you know, your priority is devotional, your priority is yourself, your church. Suddenly it gives way to your wrong priorities. So either you got your right priorities or you turn again to your old priority, which is wrong. So priorities is suddenly changed. And another positive bright, uh, bright side is now you know what is valuable now. What is, your value suddenly changed. Huh? Before this lockdown, uh, you plan to buy a house, you buy your another car, another thing, this thing. Then suddenly, whoops, you step backward like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Suddenly, your value was changed. Suddenly, things that are so important in the past, it's no longer important. Because today, your importance, your family, your children, your food, right? Your survival, your value was changed. Suddenly, God becomes important to you. Okay, those are bright side. Okay? Not just you change your priority as your bright side, but also you change your value today. Okay? And then you begin to read, take notes, you begin to research, and then suddenly you become receiving a new knowledge. Okay? Your knowledge was changed. Okay? Now you become uh, your hygiene uh, uh, understanding now is totally different. Napansin nyo? Huh? You have new knowledge now. Okay? Some pastor said you, you don't know even know how to do broadcasting but suddenly your knowledge was changed. No? Uh, you have, you're able to recreate yourself. You're able to positively you know, uh, analyze and innovate your ministry. Your knowledge okay, was changed. Okay? Suddenly your interest also was changed and then it used to be you know, uh, just read the Bible this and this and that and now Suddenly, you become interested on how to run an effective live streaming. You, you, your interest was changed. You begin to interest about the medical findings of this crisis. You begin, you, your interest was suddenly changed. You're no longer interested about cars, about this and this and that. Suddenly, you, 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 you shift your, your interest, no? 
uh, like me, I begin to be interested on in how to cook better. <laughs> so my interest was changed, but like this, uh, I begin to uh, be interested on in how to, you know, passionately help other pastors and churches. So everything, my interest was changed, my values was changed, my it changed a lot. My knowledge was changed, and I spent time with my kids. Okay, even my routine was changed, my operations was changed, everything was changed. Because of this crisis, that's why I want to see the bright side, not just the, uh, the, 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 the dark side. Because James is telling me, count it pure joy when you go through these bar, uh, various testing or trials. I was able to consider pure joy. I was able to do that because... I know how to look at the bright side on every dark situation. So, I think I want you to remind yourself that there is always a bright side in every dark moment of your life. I like that idea. So, I begin to uh, I begin to look at this uh, crisis. Now, can I share something to you? If you want to defend yourself from this crisis, okay, I want you to hear just two things. Okay, one, your greatest defense against change is to expect it. Okay, your greatest defense against crisis is to expect it. This crisis, after this, there is another crisis. You will be more prepared for another crisis if you expect it. Okay? I believe that our greatest defense against crisis is to expect it. Do you expect this? I'm not expecting it. That's why you are not prepared. But if you expect it, one day you are prepared. You see that? So I'm teaching you how to defend yourself against this crisis. Expect it. Expect it. Because when you expect it, you can prepare for it. If you don't expect it, you will be shocked and you will be consumed until your mind will be so negative. Why I was able to count it pure joy? Because I expect this. I know someday it will happen. I don't know what kind of crisis is about to come. So I prepare myself. I prepare myself. Financially, I was able to prepare myself. So now... Before I was not able to go to four piece or you know relief operation, I was the one who gave instead of I was the one who received. That's why this is your moment, okay? To expect it, this crisis must be expected. After this crisis, there is another crisis. But do you expect it? If you don't expect it, you don't prepare yourself. The second defense that you need to have is, uh, okay, listen to this. Your greatest source of disappointment in life is the expectation of things like this crisis to remain the same. Yan ang pangalawang problema. So now you are in the middle of crisis. What is your expectation? Your expectation, you said, inside of your heart, things to remain the same. That's the problem. No. When this crisis came, I will recreate myself because I cannot expect myself to remain the same. Okay? The favor will not remain the same. <laughs> it's just like when you were young, you are so strong, but when the crisis of ages, you know, tatanda ka, it's going to be different. So you expect, you don't expect that your energy, your strength are the same when you become old. Okay? So your greatest defense is one, you expect crisis will come. Second, you prepare yourself because things will never be the same again. That's your greatest defense. I am now, today I am 58 years old. In the next 10 years, you see, I'm 68. I remember a few months ago, I played basketball with some of my friends and then they pinilit nila ako they asked Bishop Real you have to play basketball so I try to play so I hold my ball and then I dribble it because I'm a point guard when I was young 
So I, in my mind, I was thinking like, I'm a point guard and I can play. But imagine I'm not playing basketball like two to three years ago. And I dribble my ball, it bounced the ball, and then suddenly I want to attack that I used to attack. Then I do some crossover left and right, and then try to move around. And then suddenly, and when I walk up, it's just in the mind. Sa isip lang pala yung aking mga crossover, but my body is not moving because he cannot move it that way because I am already 57 years old. So what does it mean? It means your greatest defense, you expect that it will come and you expect that it will never be the same again. Okay? Your strength will never be the same when you become old. Okay? That's why you need God to renew your strength. So, I think I was able to give you the background and the idea why negative forces comes to upon our life. So, this morning, okay, I'd like to share to you, okay, uh, our churches, including your family and yourself, is bombarded with negativity, okay? Now, you, your primary 12, one per four, and your cell leaders must be one. Okay? Listen very carefully. You cannot overcome this crisis if you fail to unite your people. I want you to know, unite your people so that together we could act. Okay? We could do some actions that helps the whole team. Okay? So, to unite your people, to make them one, is a big issue. Okay? Even G12 pastors, although I keep them training on the quarantine, and then I intentionally ask the pastors, probably some of you knows that, what is your feedback? How do you understand what I share to you? Do you know what I discover? There are pastors who are watching quarantine training, and until now, their, the vision out that the, the new normal doesn't sink into his life, to his family, and even to their church. That's a big problem. Imagine I'm here trying to help you, but it cannot penetrate because you're still in the box. You're in your walls, well protected. Wow. So what will happen to our ministry? Okay? I think I'd like to tell you on these important editions, that you have to bring another culture to your church during this pandemic situation. Because unity, oneness, is necessary if we want to effectively minister to our people. Okay, write this down, okay? Pastor, what area should be one and united? Okay? What area of your uh, of, you have to understand you have to understand it everyone must have a common understanding oneness in our mind that's the first thing to do because everything starts from the mind but your mind is negative and the other group people are positive it never works you must overwhelm the negativity of your people by your positive mentality. I mean, faith-filled life that's positive. When I said positive, I mean faith-filled life. Your belief system is can overwhelm your negative mindset. Okay? So, let's have some the same understanding. Okay? Okay, let's unite, but we have to have the same understanding. Okay? So, understanding on what? How can we become effective in the way we live and in the way we minister to people? That's a good question. Okay? How can we become effective or more effective during this crisis? Can all my primary 12 be effective? My one poor poor be effective? My cells be effective? How do I do that? Well, that's why you have to be united in your understanding. Now, what is the first thing that you need to understand if you want to become effective. Write it down, okay? This is the power of your oneness. Number one, 
every pastor, leaders, listen to this, your primary 12 and your leaders must have inside out lifestyle. I will repeat that. That's the number one. Inside out lifestyle. You see, our life would always start from the inside. Okay? Okay? I want you to know that you don't create the world outside in you. Create it inside out. You are about to create your world during this crisis because the world out there was trying to create our world. World of fear, doubt. That's the outside world trying to create in our world. But if you want to combat that, you need to learn how to live inside out lifestyle. Okay? It means that your circumstances and events that happen in the world are not meant to define you. It means that circumstances, that pandemic situation does not mean that will be that that will define your life. No. Okay? You are meant to define yourself, not the circumstances. Because the power is not in the circumstances, but rather in your state of mind. Okay? The love, the passion, uh, the purpose and perspective that you create with. Okay? So this is the question. How is your mindset now? Is it affected by the outside world? Think about it. Or your mindset now is different because it was created inside out. Wow. I've seen people that are so negative because they were formed, okay? They were molded by the outward world. It's from the outside. But I'm happy and I praise the Lord because while we are here on the pandemic situation, God helped me to create my world from the inside out. So I was not affected by the outside world because I was built up from the inside out. That's the right thing to do. Every cell members and cell leaders, pastors, you must be good on this. Do not let your primary jewel, all your leaders, affected negatively by the outside world. By the circumstances, by the problem, by the difficulties. Now they were bitter. You know, they are trying to give up because they were formed. They were molded from the outside. Our job as a pastor is to combat that negative world that affects your people. Teach your people to live inside out lifestyle. Inside out lifestyle. It's about your perspective inside of you. Okay? I'd like to give you an example. Like, for example, one day, I was in the traffic situation. I was driving down there in Edsa. And I told you, it's too, too slow. And I am on a hurry for a meeting. I, I miscalculated the time frame that I have. Okay? So I, I feel bad, you know, my, my, you know, you know your brain is freaking out. And then suddenly, I remember this word, live inside out, not outside in. Because the traffic is coming in, <laughs> and I'm freaking out. <laughs> because that is outside in. It affects my response, it affects my actions, because it's an inside out. Suddenly, I twist it. I put my phone and then I I hear preaching from another pastor who always encouraged me. So when I listen, suddenly I forgot the traffic. Though it was slow, suddenly my mind is telling me, this this preaching is so good. Sana matagal pa yung traffic, okay lang tong matraffic. Suddenly your mind was changed because now it's the inside out. You see that? It's now the inside out. Not the outside coming in, and then you behave because you are affected by the situation from the outside. Well, that's why I'm telling you: if your leaders, cell leaders, they cannot become a good cell leaders. Why? Because they were affected from outside in. So who will teach them the inside-out lifestyle? It's the pastor. 
giving this inside out teaching to your people. Huh? Do not be affected by that circumstances because you need to practice and master the life inside them. Because from the inside, God, the Holy Spirit is guiding us. From the inside, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is receiving guidance from the governor, the Holy Spirit. That's why your response is positive. Okay? Your eyes become suddenly, you become a shark looking for opportunity. And you are not a goldfish. You are just waiting, waiting to be fed. You see that? It is the circumstances or state of mind that produce how you feel inside of you. Okay? Remember this. It's not about the circumstances. Okay? It's not about the challenge or our economy, okay? Or our adversity or setback. I want you to know that you and your family are facing difficulties now. Okay? But please, if you can live an inside-out lifestyle, the state of your man, the state of your thinking will produce something positively in your life. Because your state of mind produces your positive actions. Okay? Your mindset was able to produce how you feel about the situation. If you are positive, you can act appropriately. Okay? So don't look at the dark portion of your problem. The problem in this world. Do not allow them to let you down. Okay? But look inside yourself. Look inside at what God has done in your life. Look at your family and decide to change the world inside out. We could decide to show the world what can be accomplished in your family or in your church when you do a lifestyle of inside out. Okay? The power is on the inside, not from the outside. When you and your family knows this and live by it, according to what you see in the inside, you will create amazing, okay, result in your life. I promise you, positive mentality, positive mindset, a heart that is filled with faith. That's the word. Keep on believing. Keep having faith in God. And I praise you. I, 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 I promise you, you will create an amazing, positive changes in your family and you will create a positive change in the outside. So that's the first thing that we need to do, okay? Inside-out lifestyle, okay? Tell that to your wife, this is inside-out. Don't look at the outside. Because when you look at the outside, it comes in and it produces negative mentality, okay? It will produce fear, it will produce doubt, and you will respond based on what you receive. And now you begin to do some negative action, you know? You, your mouth will become complaining because you are beginning to live from outside in. No, violate that. Let's go to inside out. Because when it comes from the inside, God has already bring that confidence in your heart. The Word of God is still there. For the last 10 years, if you are a 10-year Christian, for the last 10 years, God has been putting those faith, seeds of faith in your heart, and it's time to bring it alive, to bring it out. Okay? Now, number two. Write it down. Okay. You have to be united on this. Okay? I want, I, I, you know, I, I keep on talking to my primary 12, at least one by one. Because I remember, this is another spiritual skill. Distorting reality. This is the second thing that I want you to learn, okay? First, I want you to live with your team, okay? What's the first thing? You need to learn to live inside out lifestyle but the same thing is this you need to learn how to distort your reality i think jesus was so good on this remember the story when jesus was walking on the road and someone said past uh, jesus can you help me because my daughter was dying of sickness and then suddenly jesus was uh, agree and then when they are walking toward uh, the place where they live suddenly a, a woman who's bleeding for the last 12 years stopped jesus and jesus stopped and said who touched me and then you know the story and that woman, bleeding for tell, which received healing power from Jesus Christ. 
That's what happened. But the delay and delay and delay happens. And then when they reaches the house of the one who invited him to come to bring healing to his the, uh, the healing for the child, the Bible said, the child died. So when they reach the house, we saw the reality. Everyone is crying because facts and reality is in front of them. The child is dead. You see that? So some of his disciples said, Jesus, all everyone, uh, everybody is still crying because the child that used to be, uh, the child uh, is dead and the child, uh, unfortunately, the time is over. So everyone in that room, in that house, in that place, they have the reality that the child is de dead. But you know what? Jesus <laughs> is not part of the reality. Suddenly, he coming and he distort the reality. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you have the habit to distort this reality? Yeah, what are the realities? No job, no money. That's reality. Huh? Because of this crisis, we cannot, we have to stay home. We cannot work. We cannot do business. It affects the health of the people. It affects the economy. The people are depressed. Crime is about to come. That's the reality. But I'm here. I want to distort your reality. That we cannot afford to expect negative because we could distort reality. So Jesus come in and pray for the child and the child walk up and ask for food. Now what happened to the realities? Suddenly, Jesus destroyed the realities. Suddenly, Jesus break through from that reality that the child is dead. We need to learn from Jesus. I want to become a man who distort reality. That in the midst of difficulties, negativism, in the midst of people who are about to give up and surrender, I will come and I begin to do the ministry and distort that reality and the impossible become possible. That's what we need to do. I learned from Steve Jobs, you know, Steve Jobs, when you hear about him, there was a biography written by somebody, and you know, Steve Jobs has the habit going to his employee, and he said, hey, we have to do this, and this is our deadline, and everyone break out all his employee because the date that he gave is impossible. They cannot make it, it's impossible. But this guy, since everybody thought that it was impossible, they think that Steve Jobs is unrealistic. You see, you distort realities because people will be, uh, now watch this, people will think about you that you are a very unrealistic person. The employee of Steve Jobs said they would think that there was no way that they could create the software or hardware in the amount of time he was expecting. That's the condition. Okay? Now, but his Steve Jobs distorted the reality, okay? I, uh, I think the guy knows that it's impossible, but the optimism was inside of his heart. The positive thought is still there. He usually believed on the impossible. You know what happened? They accomplished what they had thought was impossible. And that's what I want you to learn this morning, my brother and sister. Your family need to see how you distort that reality. No. When everybody expecting negative things will happen, you come in and said, no, that it will never happen that way. Why? Because I have faith in God. God can intervene in my situation. What could your family and church achieve if you share your optimism with each other? and begin to distort your realities. The truth is this, the first week of pandemic, people are asking questions like this. Pastor, what do we do as a church now? Pastor, what do we do with our meeting with this life class? Everybody has been questioned that. And I asked them, what do you think? Pastor, I think everything will be stopped. Every thoughts, because they are living from the outside. But I live from the inside. I see the opportunity. 
I saw it. And because of that, okay, I saw that I begin to distort their reality. Because I know the supernatural can overwhelm the natural condition of a man. So, to tell you honestly, we could become supernatural. Hallelujah. From the inside out, we could be supernatural because we are trying to distort all this reality. When I said distort, you twist their thinking from negative to positive. You see, distorting means twisting, twisting, twisting. From unbelief, you twist them to believe. From impossible, you twist it so that it becomes possible. That's how we need to do as a team. You need to teach your primary 12, you need to teach your cell leaders and their people to twist their realities. That instead of fear, believe faith. Instead of giving up, no, let's do it. We need to sacrifice. Instead of being selfless or selfish, we need to become self-sacrificing people. Instead of waiting for people to rescue us or save us, no, 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 we rescue other people. Because other people, it's not me, it's we. I hope you understand that. So, brother and sister, that's the first two things that I want you to do. Okay? Leave an inside out lifestyle. Second, you need, okay, to distort reality. Number three, okay, you need to make a choice between fear or faith. This is that, that uh, you need to challenge all your 12. Do you want fear or do you want faith? Ultimately, being a positive team is all about working with faith in the world filled with unbelief, negativity, and fear. Imagine, you have to understand the kind of world that we live in. I'm a pastor. You know what I discover now? Okay, because of this pandemic problem, the world now is filled with fear, negativity, unbelief. They even ask question, is God exist? You see that? <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> they are asking if God is real and if still God is here. Because you know why? Uh, the fear and faith is confronting them and they respond to fear. They respond to negativity. They, they, they respond to unbelief. That's why, because they respond to negative from the outside they behave negatively they complain blah 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 you see the word because you are affected from the outside you don't live from the inside so the ultimate battle we face every day is the battle between faith and fear i want to announce that every day during this pandemic it's a battle in your life between faith and fear when you have fear because you allow the outside world to affect you. But if you have faith, because you are beginning to live outside, in, I mean inside out, as a result, you destroy and break the reality of other people. Why? Because you are living supernaturally. I believe that as a leader, you must realize that your members, your leaders are facing this battle daily. Okay? Your leaders, your, 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 your members, your cell leaders, they're filled with doubt and uncertainty. And it's your job, Pastor, to inspire them with the faith that they need. It's your responsibility. It's your number one responsibility to help people to make a decision. No fear, only faith. You have to mold them, okay? It's your job. We have to remind each other as a team that fear and faith have one thing in common. Do you know that fear and faith have one thing in common? Okay? They both believe in the future that never happened yet. Okay? Now look at this. Do you believe that fear believes in the negative future? That's fear. When you have fear, you believe that there will be negative future for you. But faith, ah, iba faith. 
When you have faith, faith believes in a positive future. Hallelujah. That's why you and I should practice faith in God. Inside out. Because when you have inside out experience, hallelujah, I believe your faith believes in the positive future. That's what I believe. So, why wouldn't we choose to believe our best days are ahead of us instead of thinking that our future is behind us? Huh? Are you the kind of person you live right now but your future is behind? Para bang sa Tagalog, in Tagalog la tapos na yung future ko. No, 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 no. Your future is never at your back. Not behind you. It's in front of you. Where did it start? It start inside of you. Never even expect that your future is in front of you. It's always from the inside then in front of you. We have to tell our team, we have to encourage them that if we believe our best days are behind us, that's the truth. If you say our future is in front of us, that's the truth also. Okay? Belief matters. So I want you to have faith in your future. Work hard. Believe for your future. You just need to work hard. And you just need to make it happen. Lahat po tayo. We need to choose faith than fear. Okay? I realized that when, once a pastor, your team of 12, when you have faith, oneness in faith, you can plan. You can strategize. I believe that. You can dream together because it's about the future now. Okay? Remember, fear is also about the future. Okay? But fear have a negative future. It's different when you have faith in God. Because your future is positive. Why? Because your faith is positive. That's why your future is positive. You expect something good about your future. Okay? That's why I'd like to tell you. Okay? This is what I believe. G12 family is the world's largest family. That's why we work together. Okay? Uh, I can feel it in my spirit that I'm part of the G12 family. It's the largest family in the world. Okay? And when I do this, uh, I have to believe. I have no fear. I have faith in God. Uh, we could distort reality if we believe God. We could live inside out if we have faith in God. That's why your companion is your faith. Your companion is the word of God. Your companion is the presence of God. Your companion is God himself. And that is from the inside. And when you have God, your faith inside, it can, will come out. And it affects the outside. Hallelujah. So I'd like to encourage everybody. Okay, write down number four. We should have one word to live. One word to live. What is your one word during this crisis? You know, I love doing this. I learn it. That every year I need to have one word that I want to live. You know, that one word can easily shape your life. Okay? Can inspire your life. What is your one word? I think during this crisis, during this crisis, what is your one word? Someone told me, Pastor Riel, when, when I hear the quarantine training, I make a decision that throughout the year, I have one word. Okay, what is your one word? Shark. I said, shark. Oh, I remember the teaching. Not goldfish, because goldfish are waiting for someone to feed them. But shark is looking for opportunity. So I said, why do you choose shark as your one word? He told me, because I have to see my opportunity like a shark. I got it. Every leaders, your team must have one word. I encourage every cell, every primary 12, come up with your one word. Oh, assignment lahat kaya, ya? Mga primary leader. Okay, what is your one word? One word that shapes and inspire our lives. One word that shapes and inspire our team. Okay, one word that will inspire us to live with more meaning and mission, passion, and purpose for this crisis. Huh? Somebody told me, Pastor, my one word is crisis. During crisis, he said, my word is fearless. Wow. Fearless, that is his one word. Okay? Another word who listened to legendary, he told me that, what is my one word? Okay, can you comment? What is your one word? 
can you share it to me? I want to see all those pastor, you know, commenting, pastor, real, this is my one word. And somebody told me his one word. The other one said, my one word is sharp. The other guy said, legendary. Wow, that's the one word. He mean, he, he want to live like a legend. While everybody's giving up, he live like a legend. He survived, hallelujah. Why? Because his one word is legendary. Other, probably could be passion, could be love, could be patient. Again, one word so that we could lead them. We could lead that word upon our lives. Okay? Uh, don't, don't let your... Uh, okay, this number four, uh, your one word more. That's your assignment. Never ever have... Today is my birthday. Today is my birthday. Huh? I'm 58 years old. What do you think is my one word? Okay? What do you think? I'm 58 years old now. Okay? And what is my one word? So most people think if you are 58 years old, you are slowing down, right? You know what is my one word? Conquest. I will still conquer. Throughout the years and the coming years, that's my word. Conquest. I'm still conquering. Number five. Okay? Mabilis lang po ito. Ang ganang pito lang ito. Okay? Now look. When I said unity from the pastors, primary 12, remember, my goal today is to unite everybody, okay? Be one, okay? Everyone must be involved. Every, everybody must be part of my, okay, strategy. Everyone must be in the bus. Number five, write it down. When I said everyone, it means everyone, okay? You talk to your team, everyone. It means no one is left behind. If we're gonna conquer, if we're gonna overcome this crisis, if we're gonna be, you know, going to the next letter during this crisis, everyone must be in the bus, okay? It means more people will be engaging on what we are doing, okay? And everyone who influences the team gets on the bus together. With our shared vision, greater purpose, the teams becomes an unstoppable force of momentum and positive energy. Everyone, I mean everyone, okay? We want everyone, our leaders, I want all church members because they are our partners. They need to know what is our new plan and our new strategy during this crisis. What would be our initiative and they need to know that. And they want to find out what is the result. Okay? Everyone, pastors, primary 12, you need to know and understand the challenges we face. That's why I want everyone to know this. Okay? The challenges we face as a church. Okay? The challenge for our visions, purpose, and goals. Everyone must be significant. They need to feel they are part of our team. That's my desire. Okay? Everyone means everyone. They need to feel they are part of the team. Every church member, let's unite them. Let us be one. This makes them more supportive. Okay? And they will help. Because everybody, your leaders, will help them to understand how much energy and effort that is required to each and every one of us. What we need to invest right now is our life to make our church successful in the middle of this crisis. Last, okay, uh, Number six, okay? Create and maintain the positive culture and your positive environment. By using the number, the five issues of your ministry now in the middle of crisis, because we want to produce, we have to create and maintain the positive culture or environment of your church, okay? I believe if you have the right environment, you have your positive environment, Okay, it always leads to winning. Okay, because your positivity will lead to action, and action leads to result. Remember, your result is come from your action. Your action comes from your positivity. Your positivity comes your right mindset, and right mindset is from the inside. So from inside out. The faith rises up, it comes alive so that it creates a culture from, from the inside, outside. And then, that's why many churches cannot grow because you are not able to develop the culture in your church of positive mindset. 
your environment is still negative because you allow the outside world to invade your church. Let us not allow the world to invade our environment. Our environment must come from the inside out to produce culture. Okay? Naniniwala po ako, winning is by product of a positive team culture. I believe in that. We need to focus all our energy on building up our leaders, our disciples, in creating this positive environment, this positive culture. You and your team will face a lot of adversity for sure, and resistance and negativity. But remember that certainty and optimism, belief and faith must be greater okay, than all the negativity, fear and doubt. Let's make our faith greater than negativity of this world. I will repeat, let us make our faith greater and more powerful than the negativity of fear and doubt outside of us. I believe that you have to share your positive belief together as a team. You need to talk to them. You need to talk to them. You need to open it for them. Discuss your challenges and tell them why you can overcome and face our challenges. Face them not with fear, but with faith. Yes, we will face the giants in our life that seems more powerful than us, but know and trust that they are no match for a team that refuses to give up. No matter what happens, don't stop believing. And last and finally, this is the most exciting part. I want you to communicate to your team. Okay, create this culture. Uh, it must come from the inside. It must break those reality. Tell them this. The best is yet to come. I like that word. I believe it's the best. The best is yet to come. Okay? If you build on this, united among your leadership team, tell them the best is yet to come. Because during the crisis, our team must stay positive. About our plan and our strategy, our goals, Okay, our strategies. Because that's for our church future. It means that the best is yet to come. Is stay positive. Live from the inside out. People are asking me, Pastor, how did you make the church do this for Christ so successful? I will tell you the truth. My church, my team, didn't have a, a team of superstar. Wala po akong superstar. You know what is my advantage? Our team believe in each other. We have a team that refuses to let negativity sabotage our plans, sabotage our dream and our future. We don't let it happen. Our team are very positive about the future. The best is yet to come. Dulos had a team that believes that the best has yet to come. Dulos family, with a relentless teamwork, faith, optimism, and determination, we believe that the best is yet to come. G12 pastors and your leaders, we need to relentlessly work as a team with faith from the inside, with outlook that comes from the inside, and a heart full of determination. To believe about our future, we can say from the inside out, the best is yet to come. Let me conclude this, my brother and sister. Your great team don't need to give up on this situation. You don't need to give up when, to when things look bad. You have to overcome the negativity of the situation with positive belief and optimism in order for us to do our best and bring out the best in others. If the team is positive and strong on the inside, we will overcome the negative forces from the outside. All of us need to overcome the negative. We can allow negativity from within to weaken us. 
No. No. A positive team can withstand the negative forces coming at them. But they will crumble if negativity comes from within. No. Okay lang. Negativity coming from the outside. But when the negativity comes from the inside, you will crumble down. We have to be positive. Our team must be positive. We know and we believe that outside forces cannot truly defeat us. I believe only we can be defeated when fear and negativity comes from within. Comes from your team. All your team must be positive. We have faith. Filled with hope. Filled with faith. And then from the inside will come out. From the inside, the leadership team, it affects our people. So today before I close, I want you to believe God. I want you to trust God. Let us be united. Let us be one for this. Let's lead inside out. No fear from the outside. Faith from the inside. We can handle this situation. We can go to our next level. We can be fruitful, multiplying, and conquering because we are not affected by the world from the outside. Life is affected inside out. So God bless you and I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you. We praise you for the love that we receive from you, Lord. Thank you because deep inside of us, Lord, you have planted the seeds of greatness. You have planted the word, God. You have planted so much thing in our life, Lord, that now we could draw it upon, Lord, from the inside out, Lord. Today, I pray that every seed would rise up in the name of Jesus and those seeds will grow and mature, Lord, so that we could live inside out, Lord. Thank you because of the strength from the inside we can afford, Lord God, to face the giant, Lord, to face all the negative things, Lord, the fear, the doubts, the negativity, Lord, because right now our heart is filled with faith and passion, Lord, vision and dreams, Lord, and purpose. Today, God, thank you for every pastor. I pray that you would empower them and let them live from the inside out, Lord. Thank you. I bless mo, Panginoon, ang bawat believers, pastors, churches, Lord, all around the world who listen to this, Lord. Thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.